You're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Four seconds left. Hello, everybody, and welcome into RBLR Lightning. As always, my name is Jake Ricker, and today we have the one and only Eureka Wheeler with us. He's normally in the producer seat, but today he's joining us on the podcast. I could not be more excited. Eureka, uh, welcome in. How you doing, my friend? Man, I am. Uh, it's the off season. I don't know. It's long, and we're in this weird place where it's like we're a month and a half or so away from real hockey, and it feels like only yesterday that we had our our, our hearts broken in the in the Stanley Cup final. But we, you and I, always have a good time together. So I'm excited to fill in, man. Always happy to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it is right in that spot still where it's like. We're so close to the preseason and getting into the stuff of like how next season's gonna look, but we're we're still a little bit away from that. But it's it's right around the corner, and I for one cannot wait. There's a ton of things that we're waiting on right now. Um, obviously, with you know the development camp getting ready to get underway, and then preseason, as I mentioned, we're waiting for those new uh, reverse retro jerseys that we talked about mm. last time. We're waiting for uh, the jersey ads to come out, uh, and you know, so if you want to hear all about that as well, make sure you go check out our lost pat, lost pat. Uh, last podcast as well if you did not hear that one so be sure to do that as well um but eureka today uh we're gonna look at a couple of different things but the first thing i wanted to talk about is the athletic who does a fantastic job on all of their coverage released a great a kind of a a report card for each team uh in the nhl and uh, all 32 teams got different grades uh, and I wanted to go over and take a look at some of those things. And the Tampa Bay Lightning were the second-ranked team uh, for their franchise. They received an overall grade of an A+. Plus, mm-hmm. A 4.4 was the number rating they gave them when they were the second-ranked team. Colorado was the team that was ahead of them, not by much. Um, I kind of think that might have some recency bias in it because they are the Stanley Cup champions right now. Um, but there were some interesting things uh, when it comes to the grading. And I'm going to go through the report card um, yeah. quickly, and then Eureka, I'll, I'll get your thoughts about it, and I'll talk about it. But, so yeah. there were two ratings, basically. There was the public rating and then the fan base rating. And I believe this is all done. Uh, the Athletic puts out polls every once in a while, and uh, subscribers can go in there and, and vote for this kind of stuff. So for the public, there were uh, a couple different categories. There was roster building, cap management, draft and development, trading free agency vision and then the total score so for the public uh, they gave the lightning a a plus in roster building a 4.7 which ranked second um, in the nhl for the fan base it was an a at a 4.8 and second in the nhl now cap management for the public it was an a at a 4.1 third in the nhl fan base was also an a at a 4.7, they're first in the NHL for, for the Lightning fan base. Draft and development, A- minus for the public, third in the NHL. Uh, the fan base was an A-, minus, 4.5. Trading, uh, both of them got an A for both public and fan base. Free agency, same thing, both got an A. Vision, A- plus for the public, and the fan base had an A. And then total overall, the public gave the Lightning an A+. Plus. And the fan base gave the Lightning an A, which I actually found kind of funny there because you would think the fan base would be more excited uh, with the success that the team has had recently. Um, But Eureka, I'll start with you. Any interesting things that pop out to you with those grades that we just went over there? Um, You know, recency bias uh, be damned. Like, um, I think the public, this public that they're rating... um, has us like down, we're third and fourth. Like, uh, I think that uh, people, uh, I think uh, it's Avalanche, I think, are probably first on the list, right? Am I, am I yes, wrong on that? Yes, correct. And I would assume that the Colorado Avalanche are first, like in all of those little like subcategories as well. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to think like, who are they putting 
bl- like p- like it looks like Carolina seems to be like second and third where we're like fourth on most of these little subcategories. It's uh it's the fan base, like our fan base in this poll is what's propping us up to second because I think that if you asked a Lightning fan right now like how are we building the roster? How are we developing people? How about trades and the free agents that we brought in and like the, the these little categories of vision and total, you know, like total overall. Um, absolutely, uh, the fan base is like, I think we are overwhelmingly confident that our team is not out of the window. We are in the middle of, of what's going on and, and we will continue to be good for the foreseeable future. But... Um, you know, I guess everyone else that isn't a Lightning fan, I think will deduct points, be like, oh, well, they're, I mean, we've heard all these choruses, the cap cheaters, ooh, so free agency <laughs> and cap management, ooh, you're going to get docked on that. Um, you know, ooh, you didn't have a, fr- you haven't had one first round pick in, in, in many, many years, so draft and developing will ding you on that, not looking at that, like, all of our superstars are our own draft picks for the most part. Um, you know, and even in trading in free agency, I mean, other than some like mid-level little trades, we haven't really gone out and like swung for the fences and brought in, you know, Sidney Crosby or something like that, right? So, so I get it. I, I, uh, but I see the disparaging, uh, marks from the public that would have us, uh, not so high where I think fan base, my pulse of the fan base is that we are like still riding very high. And I think that the fan base would tell you, if we didn't run into the buzzsaw that was the Colorado Avalanche, uh, we would be sitting pretty pretty with three uh, three cups in three years, right? There's no way they wouldn't be first if they were the if they had beaten the Colorado Avalanche because yeah. you you can't put a back to back to back Stanley Cup champions not first in in this poll. But the one that that surprised there's a couple of things that surprised me, but one of the ones that I was surprised at the most is the lowest grade they had. They were all A's, so. We're really going into the the differences of A minus A plus, mm. and so we're kind of nitpicking at this point too, as everything is really good. Um, but the draft and development surprised me because both the public and the fan base gave them an A minus in this mm-hmm. category, yeah. and to me, I think that's kind of crazy. I, mm. I would see that as an A plus. Um, and I don't know if this is so. There's two ways to look at this, right? So the reason I say A plus is because you look at the Lightning roster. A majority of our talent was drafted by us. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky, draft pick from from the Lightning. Steven Stamkos, granted he was a first overall pick, but still a pick by us. Uh, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Palat, even though he's no longer on the team, he was our, our own draft pick. I mean, there's, there's just guy after guy on this current roster that are top players in the NHL. And you look at a guy like Andre Palat, who just went out and got paid by the New Jersey Devils and is probably going to play top line minutes um, in, in New Jersey. There are so many guys that we drafted and have made a huge impact on the Lightning. So it surprises me that they are not higher up in the draft and development category. But I think the reason for that, if I had to guess here, is because if you look at the current draft and development, like the current prospect pool, which we're going to get into this later, Mm -hmm. um, is a lot smaller because the Lightning have been trading so many of their uh, first round draft picks and a couple of other prospects as well to acquire those Stanley Cups, if you will. Uh, it paid off a lot because a lot of them turned into Stanley Cups. But So I don't know if it's just a recency thing in that the, the outlook for the, the draft and development doesn't look as fantastic. But to me, you look at the current roster, and we don't know what's going to happen with a lot of those prospects, but you look at the current roster and how many of those guys that we drafted, especially guys like Vasilevsky, Kucherov, Point, Stamkos, I mean, the list goes on, Hedman as well, um, I don't understand how you don't get an A plus in that category, and because they were ranked, let's see, the fan base was fourth and public was third. Um, I mean, I really don't know who else is doing things better than that in the drafting department. Well, what's crazy is really the only team you can compare the Lightning to, the only team in my mind is the Colorado Avalanche. They're the only team that is built, and we, and we talked about this when I was uh, a gracious guest on the the Bull Report, is that. Um, when we previewed the Stanley Cup, we said that, like, this was a mirror matchup because the Avalanche built through their draft. They they went out and got the couple right. pieces they needed. 
but through and through, this was this was their own Kale McCarr, McKinnon, Landis Cog, right? What's funny is, like, in this poll, if you go to the Colorado Avalanche's grades, the fan base rated them th- four out of five. Thir- they were 13th in draft and development. Their own fan base is like, yeah, I don't know if we draft well. So, again, <laughs> uh, again, we're talking about a, 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 an informal poll. But I just wanted to point that out because, like, you're making your point, and, and I agree with you. Because well and and uh, and well, there's two sides of that. I agree with you because of the results that we've had. It is uh, obviously, uh, it is not a controversial statement to say they've drafted well and the, at the top level of their team right now is mostly because of their drafting that they did, you know, in in years past. Uh, and we'll get into this. I'm a, I think in, in our next topic, but uh, the question mark. And this is all about fan bases and. Uh, public perception and all that kind of stuff. The the question mark is now: How confident are you in their ability right now to draft and develop, and where are they setting themselves up for the future? Uh, I don't know about the Colorado Avalanches. Uh, why they're like, uh, why the fan base is so down on their ability uh, to do that, considering all of their stars are are the same. Everything you just said about us. It's the same thing, and and they might even right. have a couple more uh, prospects in the pipeline coming up. Which is why both these franchises were number one and number That's, two in this poll. They have to be. It like like it's ridiculous to to say otherwise, right? Like these are the two. That they are a tier above everyone else. Um, right. And, and I even look down to. I look down at who's number three, and it's the Detroit Red Wings, who were just like absolute, like not anywhere near the class of, of the other two teams. Um, but they are a team on the rise, and so right now, I believe that that it's they're the trendy pick for like an upswing in in wins and an upswing in a in a playoff position, and I think their fan base is very 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 energized, um, more so this year than last year or the year before, um, because they've been just on this rebuilding uh, program and. You know, the guy that architected our current success is their general manager, you know, Steve Weiserman. I, we- I was right? just going to say, is yeah. it a coincidence that no, of course Steve Weiserman is in with not. both the of two not. of the, the top three teams? No, no I I, I, so. Stevie Y and Joe Sackick, and, uh, and I, you know, I, I don't know if you want to call JBB a, like, disciple of Weiserman, but... but these are the three dudes who are doing like the best. Uh, uh, no question. If you ask their fan bases, like, well, I, I don't know. I think even the public would agree with it too. Yeah, it's so like the these are the dudes that you when you get a phone call from these guys, you're like, oh no, what what's happening here? Um, we're gonna get fleeced somehow. <laughs> uh, but but really, it, uh, I think the the Lightning for sure have had. Um, very good success at the top of their drafts, and they've had guys, um, you know, come the boils of the world that come through and are solid, like mid tier uh, guys that are the glue guys, you know, the guys that everyone else you need. You know, you need a Stamkos, you need uh, points of the world, the uh, Kucherovs of the world, um, but you also have to be able to draft guys that inevitably become your bottom six guys. So, well, I think we have a good discussion right. coming up about that. Um, but as far as this grading goes, yeah, uh, draft and development an A minus. Not, it, it, I don't know what the, I don't know what they were polling on. But if you're asking about results, it's unquestionably like an A plus that we have drafted and developed people. Um, but uh, I don't know how they frame the question because we could have a debate. Maybe we will about their 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 current situation or their like uh, future situation. Right, and, and you bring up a couple of good points in the fact that this was uh, the Athletic did this poll, and despite them being one of the uh, probably the largest um, reporting group, I don't know what the right word is for that. Um, you know, it's still a only a, a small sample size. You know, not every single Lightning fan was involved. Um, yeah, they're just a little poll. bit bigger than we are at RBLR. Just, just a tad. Uh, like just, just a <laughs> They got what, like ten more followers? Maybe like that? you know. Uh. <laughs> and, it, and again, it is also nitpicking too, because you know it could be a lot worse. It could it could be the Philadelphia Flyers, who I'm pretty sure had a D in every single category. Oh, I got, now I want to scroll uh, all the way down. I got to see uh, who's like that, who's in the that was ugly. Um, unfortunately, I, I think they had a D in every category. Buddy, if I'm they not are mistaken. yeah, buddy, they are dead last. Honestly, surprised they didn't get an F at all. Well, um, D minus in every category. 
Like, only D because minus. I think... I don't know... I, well, and the fan base is literally 96% less confident than they were year over year. For the Lightning, it's um, mm. the fan base is 32% more confident over the yeah. last year, which that surprised yeah. me a little bit. You would think that would be kind of the same since the Lightning have had continued top tier six lives, Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup final. Um, but the, the fan base is, uh, and rightfully so, obviously really excited um, yeah. about what's been happening recently. Um, and, you know, the other thing that surprised me too a little bit was the free agency grade. Um, both public and fan base give the Lightning an A in that. I mm. thought that would be lower just because of the fact that that the Lightning don't typically do too much in free agency, and yeah. that's because they've been so good at drafting and don't have a lot of cap room. Yeah. Now, granted, they have signed a couple of guys that have been huge. Uh, for example, you know, uh, Belmare, Pat Maroon. Elliot. Um, Elliot, yeah. There, there have been some really good free agent signings for the Lightning, uh, but they've mostly been kind of bottom six roles. As you were talking about earlier, you know, you need those kind of guys, and that's yeah. usually where they get them in free agency. Yeah. Um, but they're just not super active, so I was surprised that that ended up as high as it did. Yeah, I, I think you'd flip that. I don't know what we're we're rated first in free agency, but fourth in draft and development. And I'm like, I, I would be okay right. if that was flipped. Like, if I 100 percent agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would that would make a lot more sense. Yeah, it's it's for the fan base. It's fourth in draft and development, yeah. and then first in free agency, which is a little surprising. Yeah. Uh, I think in public they're both in third. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, this is more a um, uh, it's fun, you know, a, a round fun. of applause it's for fun. the Lightning. They are ranked second in this poll and showing that they are a model franchise. And the fact too, you can look at this this way too. You know, Lightning again. Not a original six franchise. They are a southern franchise that a lot of people thought would never succeed, and they are now a model franchise for the NHL. And it is very impressive uh, what they've done and what they continue to do. And many people expect that they're going to be right back in the in the thick of things for to make another run at the Stanley Cup yep. um, once again this year. Even though that despite them losing multiple players, um, so they they have done everything right, and they are absolutely. A, a model franchise, and we are lucky to be Lightning fans uh, over these last couple of years for sure. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about, though, Eureka, and we kind of talked about this a little bit or, or nudged towards it, was uh, our prospect pool. Because uh, mm. also The Athletic, uh, they put out an article recently. I think they're starting to do this every couple of days, but they're ranking each of the team's prospect pools. Um, and the Lightning were at number 31. Uh, which mm. is very, Out of very, how many very teams? low. How many teams are in the National Hockey 32. League? 32. Mm. 32. Yeah. 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 So second to last. Hey, we're not um, last. And, I, and I wanted to bring up, or I wanted to pose this question, and it's basically, is this an issue for the Lightning? Are they at the point where this is going to be an issue for them down the road? And Eureka, I'll pose that question to you first, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it as well. My simple uh, opening answer is, uh, yeah, probably, only because uh, it depends on how long this core is healthy and playing at the Hall of Fame level that they, they are, right? So, if this window is only one or two more years, if the wheels start to fall off in two seasons... We are in a world of hurt because we have mortgaged our 2025 to 2027 future for right now, right? Like that, there is a price to pay for trading away the draft picks, trading away the, 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 the pipeline capital that we have and the people that are in it. And we will get into these. I'm, I'm sure maybe even on a one on one, one on one player by player basis. But, um, my, quick answer is that what they have right now is good enough to replenish the bottom of their roster as long as the top of the roster is the same and is as good but if there's a drop off or an injury or something that happens to our hall of fame level players that are in these positions right now can this youth come in in the next couple years and be at the top of the roster that's the big question, and unfortunately, uh, my quick response right now is 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 no. That would be a problem. 
Um, but uh, I've laid out a couple. I've laid out a crazy scenario. What, what say you, Jake? Well, I think you nailed it right there when you said that this the group they currently have is definitely capable of filling in that you know bottom six, maybe you know middle six, and and by that I mean you know like second line, maybe second line. It's not that top tier talent the the stamkos is the Braden points the nikita kutra i mean maybe one of these guys could do it and that'd be fantastic but i think that's i think you're absolutely right i think that was the best way to, way to put it um now granted i would sit here and tell you and say listen i with the fact that we mortgaged our future and we're gonna stink for a couple of years because we won two back-to-back stanley cups you just gotta look final. at your look at that bling and and it makes right. <laughs> it feel all good all better and yeah. who knows we might even win another one before that that time comes um, and you're also right in the fact and saying that it also depends on just the way it works with the top of the core. You know, guys like Sam Coast and Hedman who are getting older, I have no idea when they're going to retire or when their play will start to decline. I mean, heck, you look at guys like Tom Brady. Granted, he's playing a different sport, but, you know, he's playing in, into his 40s. Um, and, and so you never know when these guys, these guys are going to retire, but they are getting to that age now where they're considered older. Um, and again, old in the sports world is basically, you know, 30, 30, 35, uh, it's which me. Is, I'm old. I'm old right? in the sports world. That, that is Jake. quote on air quotes old, but <laughs> I don't know when that's going to happen. And by the time it does happen, maybe the lightning will have a couple of great draft picks and, and start to develop some guys. And this could not be an issue in, in the future. Um, or actually, you know, I would say is the lightning are probably going to keep trading their first round draft picks to try and push for some more Stanley cups too. But um, it's it's hard to say because you know you look at guys like uh, Alex Beer Boulay, um, who I have on a couple of times. I believe we talked about him on this podcast before. You know he's still a, a young prospect for the Lightning. He is getting a little bit older, um, and and some people would say he's running out of time. But you know he's he's right on that edge of where he looks like he could be a great player in the NHL. Could really help out on that Lightning power play, but. He hasn't been able to to go to that next level, and every guy that's gotten close to that, um, like a good example would be uh, Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish, who were both up and coming for the Lightning very quickly, and then yeah. the Lightning traded uh, to get a couple of guys to make a push for the Stanley Cup uh, this this last season. Right. So it's just that I think they have a lot of good prospects that have good potential. Um, but a lot of them ended up getting traded just because they're they're in the position that they are right now and going for Stanley Cups. I think JBB, if you asked him, said, listen, we're going for as many Cups as we can right now to build that dynasty, and then if we have to rebuild for three or four years, so be it. That's 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 fine. Yeah, the, 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 the year that I'm worried about is uh, 2026, which is what? Uh, what do you call this? this is twenty two, twenty three? So that's one, two, three, three years. That's four years from now because that's right, four seasons. That's the last year that for sure you have Nikita Kucherov. But at this time, at that point, he's thirty three years old, thirty four. Braden Point would be thirty, thirty one years old. Uh, even Nick Paul would be thirty one, thirty two years old. Stamkos is probably gone by that time, but that means that's nine million dollars that you've now allocated somewhere else. Um, and you you still have Sergachev uh, there at you know relatively twenty seven, twenty eight year. Uh, Chernak would still be there at twenty nine. Um, and I think you, st- and you still have Andre Vasilevsky, uh, at age 33, uh, or so, which is still, it's crazy to think how good Andre Vasilevsky is now. And then like goalies are just getting like better and better or longer. There's long, more longevity. So we'll see what happens, but that's like the last year, um, where you have all of those guys because Kucherov is an unrestricted free agent in 27, um, and, and, and all those guys are now like past the peak of the prime or they're like at the last right. ditches of their prime. So we're really talking about, you know, a four. This is why I think the fan base is so excited because all of those guys we still have for four more years in their prime or their uh, expected primes. So, 
uh now it is just like yeah maybe the maybe these guys you know we'll we'll talk about them uh, i think a little bit but like the jack thompson's and dylan dukes and jack finley's like these are the guys that um they might come in and might already have a year or two of of professional experience and they might hopefully we find a diamond in the rough here between here and there or the ice man shows up in the next three four years um to kind of uh replenish the ranks so that that window is is still really good but um um the other part of that is if you look at roster construction is like other than this year next year by 2024 you could have a a whole completely different reconstruction uh, construction of the the middle to bottom of this roster through free agents and guys that are ring chasing and and whatnot that you might have while you still have those top level tiers. So, so that's why I'm looking at 2026 where I'm like, is that the to me that's the that's the year that that these prospects we're about to talk about they need to show up and they need to be solidified as members of this roster in order to call them a success. Well, and the other thing too, to think about that I think is interesting. You brought up, you know, guys like when Stamkos is gone, that, that cap space then becomes available. They could be pushed somewhere, somewhere else. I think what the lightning could be doing is kind of looking at this as like, Hey, we, as we mentioned earlier, we know we have prospects that could more than likely fill in that those, those bottom six roles guys like uh, Brandon Hagel who are only on a 1.5 million dollar contract for the next two years they could step up and maybe young. help young. out yeah. in that that top six role more if he's able to increase his production he's going to be a guy to keep your eye on this upcoming season by the way which we'll get yeah. into in some later episodes but yeah. um then by the time these guys do start to go away like Stamkos and Hedman Maybe they just look at it and say, hey, we have a bunch of cap space now. Maybe we can sign a couple of guys uh, to fill in that top six role and just kind of have the draft and development part keep that, that uh, you know, Jeep-type player, if you will, to, to quote John Cooper again, which, by the way, um, had his 55th birthday today. Oh, yeah. uh, so yeah, happy, birthday happy birthday to John Cooper. Happy birthday, Coach. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy Thank birthday, you for buddy. all the, the success that you've brought to this Tampa Bay franchise. Um, and here's here's to many more as well. But cheers to you, buddy. Absolutely. Um, but to get back into it, you know, maybe the Lightning could look at it that way and say, "Listen, once these guys go up, we can take that cap space and try to uh, replenish that top six through free agency mm. instead of the draft, which they did." A re- you know that uh, mm. the way they built this team Man, that's was expensive, Jake. It is very expensive. Ooh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe some guys will want to come to Tampa and. You know, for those those boat parades and jet skis and warm weather, um, and take oh that discount. <laughs> but they they built this team through drafting and taking those draft picks to be the top six, um, yep. and then the free agency they used to fill out that bottom six. Maybe things try and flip a little bit um, when you get to that point. You're absolutely right, though. That is crazy expensive. You're filling um, holes, man, and and in at the lower level, you know, one million, one point five, two point five. Cool, I get right. it. If you're trying to find a $10 million forward, <laughs> you know, you're trying to find that's a, a lot more. A, an $8 and million when dollar you're, when you're defenseman. When you're in free agency, it's, you're, not, you're, you're not getting guys for 9.5. You're getting yeah. guys for 11, 12 on uh, the open market because that's just the way it is. Yeah. And things are only getting more expensive too. So that, um, but I, you brought up Isaac Howard. He's an interesting one, right? So he was just drafted this year. Uh, he was – He's probably the most hyped first round pick the Lightning have had in that bell who buckle. knows how long. It's that bell buckle, Jake. Yeah, people have been really <laughs> excited about him, and he's got some good potential. And he could yeah. definitely be that guy that steps up and yeah. and who knows, maybe takes that uh, that top six role and is able to help keep the Lightning afloat. Yeah. So Isaac Howard is a good one to keep in mind. But again, it's so hard because you know he was just drafted. Uh, so we, we know nothing about him and how he's going to play at the AHL level, let alone the NHL level. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at a guy like ABB again, he had 100 and, was 126 points his last year in the QMJHL, and then he just hasn't been able to translate. So it's it's really difficult to tell exactly um, – Ooh, how this is all going to play out. But um, Eureka, is there any any guys that you've looked at specifically um, down in the, in the AHL that you think could make a difference for the Lightning um, in replacing some of those guys in that year, 2026? Yeah, well, it depends on uh, if you call Cal Foot. Is, is Cal Foot still a prospect or not, right? 
he he's another guy like ABB who's right on that edge. Yeah. Like technically, he's had some NHL experience, but yeah. he hasn't taken a full you know Ooh. year where he's Man. actually been in that position. If you know what I mean, so he's yeah. like right on the edge. Well, this is my the if he if he doesn't take a leap forward, I, I don't want to get into this because I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of this in our. Uh, you know, preseason predictions and stuff like that. But I'm just going to say here, this is a guy that this is a make or break year for a Cal foot, because if he doesn't take a leap, there's a Jack Thompson that they just drafted a couple years ago that might be ready to take the leap. And from all accounts, he took a huge leap and now he's in Syracuse and they just drafted him two years ago. He's taking all of the advantage of this weird schedule of the COVID years and all this kind of stuff. Um, he right now uh, projects to be a bottom pairing defenseman, but that's where Cal Foot is. And this, here's a guy that could come in, and and maybe we don't want to match if some team wants to make Cal Foot like a millionaire. You know, maybe we don't want to match because we've got uh, a Jack Thompson who's a two way mobile defender. He just has to kind of push that level up to get there. So so I like him. Um, another guy, uh, I mean, he's a goalie, but uh, uh, Hugo uh, uh, Analfelt, he's in Syracuse. Another guy that just turned 20, playing in the AHL, and just needs to show that he can rise to that NHL level. But that's a that's a huge way uh, not to already push um, the moose out of his position, but it's another way to save a million dollars, you know, if they're able to bring in a young guy as the future, if not just like a solid hand that could come in, that's a way they could save. Because if with what your scenario you're talking about is, if you if you need all the money you can, you're gonna find a way to say, well, Vasilevsky's gonna play every damn game anyway. Why are we paying some guy a million dollars to only play 20 games a year when we could bring in a, a young guy, you know, for a younger uh, he's going to be in a lesser role anyway and uh, use that money elsewhere, right? Um, I'm trying to think of one other guy I'd want to talk about. I mean, there's there's a really raw prospect, but the but the guy I want to talk about next is probably Dylan Duke. He's a, he's a forward left winger. Yeah. They just drafted him, but two, three years from now, he's a dude that uh, has kind of, I don't want to say Tyler Johnson vibes, but he's a dude who plays bigger than his size. He's not as fast, of course, as a Tyler Johnson, uh, and that's maybe the one area he needs to improve. But he could be, he's a guy I'm looking at to be a middle six winger, to be a dude who, like, he he came from a, a great pedigree, Michigan University, um, where they're just stacked. And he hasn't been able to break out in Michigan, but that's just because they have so many God. Michigan could probably beat the Flyers, you know, uh, uh, a couple times <laughs> if they, they played. They probably could. I mean, I don't know about a, a seven-game series, but like you know, if the if the ice is right and you know the the uh, things happen, Dylan Duke could probably put one in the net against the Flyers. But um, yeah, those are those are kind of the three guys. Jack Thompson for sure is a guy you're going to see in the next couple years. I think they're they're really really hoping he levels up. I hope they they're looking at uh, Dylan Duke. But uh, the last guy I wanted to bring up as a, as a prospect is uh, Jack Finley. He's a center. He's a huge. He's six six. Okay, six six forwards don't just grow in trees. Um, but the problem with Jack Finley is he's not going to be your first line guy because he's like uh, he's he's six six, but he's skinny. So at two hundred and twenty three pounds, which is a lot, but when you're six six. It's like if he gets bigger, is he going to be able to still be quick, uh, quick enough for the NHL level? Mm. But if he gets too big, will he lose some of the physic? Uh, 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 if he's not big enough, like if he tries to keep a, a slender frame, will he be physically unable to play at the NHL level because people are being able to bully his? He's tall, but he's not physically dominant, right? Um, so I think like all these guys that I'm talking about, they don't project to be top level guys. Like Jack Thompson should be a you know middle of the road defender. Dylan Duke should be like a middle of the road winger. Hugo is a backup. You know, especially if you still have Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, Jack Finley is like 
hopefully an exception to the rule, like, oh, he's taller than normal, or he's more agile than normal for his size, or or he's going to have to find this, like, back way into the NHL. Um, none of that, none of that is, like, can't miss prospect, right? There's not, like, a big red light over any of these guys that are just saying, like, sure, fire NHL player, uh, or, or star. They're saying NHL player, um, and that's kind of what, what full circle goes back to what I'm saying, like, They've already hit at the top level. Can they keep replenishing these guys? Because if we're if we're hoping that Jack Thompson, Dylan Duke, uh, or Jack Finley are going to just come in and replace, you know, uh, 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 guys like Point, uh, 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 Sergachev, things like that, then it's like, eh, I don't know. Uh, so I've been rambling on. I'll, I'll, I'll put down the mic, uh, Jake. Am I no, completely I wrong it. on all that? Let me know, great please. Information. <laughs> <laughs> please. No, I'll, I'll, Everything you said was was pretty much spot on. I think. Um, I think what the point were or the conclusion we're coming to here is that the Lightning, they don't have quantity, but they could potentially have some quality, and that's where it's really gonna, you know, the difference is gonna be if you're Jack Thompson's, Jack Finley's, Isaac Howard's, you know, if they can take that next level and continue to really improve you know, the lightning could be okay for the next couple of years. Um, if they don't, and they're kind of just where they're projected that bottom six, and then we start to lose guys like Stamkos, Hedman, that's where it could become a problem. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why they're ranked so low is because they don't have that quantity anymore because they've traded a lot of those players for Stanley cups. And again, at the end of the day, this might just be worth it. You know, we, we won back to back Stanley cups right. and we're still competing now. And, uh, who knows? We might be trading some of these guys in the near future as well. If we're still trying to squeeze in a couple more Stanley Cups, I don't know. Um, but well, Jake, I was going to bring up something we talked about when we got um, uh, in the uh, either it was the Paul deal or we we gave up we gave up some first round or we gave up some draft capital to bring in. Uh, I think it was Nick Paul, and at the time, I think he, I might have even guest appeared on the show. Because I think I, I had said something like, look, the 2027 Lightning hate this deal, but you brought in a dude <laughs> for the next couple years, right? Um, right? At some point, you pay the piper. Um, now, I mean, JBB might be able to to, to, to wiggle this out, but and, and at some point, we might need to look at our, like, maybe the 2029 Lightning or whatever, like, are horrible, and we just need to keep looking at our Stanley Cup rings to, like, just say, oh, okay, no, I get it, you know? It was um, worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. You know, we, we sit here and look at how many Eastern Conference championships did we win? How many Stanley Cups did we win? How many division championships did we win? And, and maybe it will all make sense. But I think, I, I, in my mind, it now goes to, like, not just can you can you get a first rounder that pays off? Because obviously, like, a lot of these guys we talked about that are the draft top of the line we got in the first couple rounds. Now it goes into, and this has been a question mark. I don't have the answer, but the question mark has been, where are the the Sorellis, right? Where are the the guys that we find out of nowhere? Where are the guys that, um, I mean, I could be wrong. Wait, Sorelli was a late round pick, right? Am I am I wrong about that? He, he was, yeah, he was okay. a later round. So pick. so it's that kind of stuff that I'm looking for is like, where are these dudes that we just have the intel on, right? And I mean, every I know every team in the league wants that, but uh, again, it's the, that's the that's the razor's edge that you live on in the well, National Hockey have been league. known to do that, and that's a big part right. of their current ride. Like Kucherov was a second round pick, which yeah. isn't crazy, but like today, Kucherov would be probably the number one overall pick. Yeah. Um, he definitely would be. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I think we've you know kind of hit it uh, um, where we've said like, listen, the Lightning have a couple of prospects that could definitely make a difference. And again, you know, I keep bringing this up, but like this is all on a multiple years like this is a this is a little ways away we still have plenty of time oh uh, for to sure <laughs> try and work this out yeah this is a long ways away as we're just trying to get ready uh for this next upcoming season but again the key you know it's it's going to be guys like abb and calfa we, we we talked about you know those those guys have pressure now right this is their probably their last year, maybe one or more two years if they're lucky after this, yeah. to to prove it and move up into the NHL. And they both could be fantastic players for the Lightning down the road. Um, 
So these are big years for those guys. Uh, you got me excited about Jack Thompson now because I was looking at his his stats as well, um, mm-hmm. and and he he really did have an explosion uh, of offense this year. Yep. I mean, he had thirty two points um, in twenty nineteen to twenty twenty, and then in this most recent year he was in two he played with two different teams. But yeah, uh, we want to see know, him had, for a full time in Syracuse before right. We he make had like, like fifty opinion. something points uh, this last year, so we'll have to see him in Syracuse. He's only played one game in Syracuse, right? Uh, which he did right. have a, a point in, um, so it, <laughs> it did go well. But yeah, we need to see him more more in Syracuse, and yeah. then kind of same thing for Jack Finley too. He's kind of improved, although. Uh, he only played a couple of games with Syracuse as well. So a lot of these guys we probably need to see in the AHL and see how they fare. That's where they're at. Um, yeah, for sure. Because l- just because you're good at one level doesn't mean you're going to be good in the other. I mean, that's been a big thing for ABB. You know, who's you had a lot a, of you success. You wrote a really good article about that, by the way, on Bolt Report. I appreciate you wrote that. A really Thank good you. Article about that, yeah. yeah, if you guys want to check that out, it's over at, uh, at the Bolt Report. Uh, you go on our Twitter page and, and find our website there. But, um, I did. I talked about how, you know, he's really good at the AHL level, um, but he hasn't been able to translate that to the NHL. Uh, the other guy, too, uh, Jaden Giroux, um, mm. he's really young. We just drafted him uh, a couple of years ago. We actually interviewed him a, a while ago, um, but he had a pretty good year last year. Uh, he had he played three games with the Crunch, had a goal uh, in those three games, and then in his 49 games played with the uh, Portland Winterhawks, had 66 points, uh, which is very impressive as well. So, there's definitely a couple of, of lightning prospects um, that could make the difference and keep the lightning uh, window alive for the extended future, even after we start to lose or some of these guys get older in Kucherov and Stamkos and Vasilevsky. Um, however, if they don't, once those Kucherovs, Hedman, Stamkos start to get older, retire, whatever it is, or injuries, as you mentioned, then it could become an issue. So again, Lightning do not have the the quantity anymore, so they can't afford to miss uh, on many of these drive picks. But hopefully that won't be the case. And we've got some time right now. We can hang out and and enjoy our Stanley Cup runs and and uh, just bask in the glory. Right the window now, ain't closed. The, the window ain't closed, it. man. Right? No, it's absolutely not closed. It, it is absolutely not. We still got at least what four more years, I would say. Well, I would say so. So, so the uh, just. Just, I have no answers. I'm just putting crumbs out there. But like this year, for sure, there are going to be some some questions on like, do you bring back Alex Kalorn at year 33? Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's going to be a lot more expensive than four and a half million dollars if you want to. Does Stamkos actually play past 2023? Like that's still just a year or two away. Um, and and. Uh, Maybe uh, Corey Perry's and Belmar's like kind of get shedded off the roster after a year, um, but you know where does Ross Colton figure? Is Ross Colton the two million dollar guy or is he a four million dollar guy? Like those are big questions, right? Um, is when you're looking at a guy like Cal Foot, you know, again I, I brought it up, but I'm like, if he's a nobody, does he get just replaced at the bottom of the roster, or does he make the leap and you no longer keep a guy like Ian Cole around at three million because you're giving Cal Foot two and a half million? Like, like there's a lot of questions that are going to come up. Uh, this is a big year for a lot of the younger guys that we still we're keeping we're keeping some of the really older uh, established veterans on the team for this year because I think they're just rerunning it back from last year, which why not? We were the Easter Conference champions, uh, and we were just you know a couple uh, bounces away from being in the Stanley Cup in the one of the greatest Stanley Cups uh, finals ever. So it's going to be fun to see how these young guys really do react because uh, – um, maybe not this year, but next year, there's a lot of questions that we're, we'll go into because 2024, uh, other than Kucherov, Point, Nick Paul, uh, Sergachev, and Chernak, and, and Vasilevsky, like there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, positions up for grabs, so. Uh, the core will still be there. It's just kind of the bottom roster. That's why. That's why I thought this was a great topic that you brought up because it's like maybe not this year, maybe not next year, 
but that following year, a lot of these guys are going to be in that mix. So, so thanks right. for bringing up that topic today, man. It was yeah, really, really absolutely. Good. At the end of the day, it's you know, it's so many questions, so little answers that we unfortunately <laughs> um, um, just just don't know. But I tell you what, Eureka, you know what never goes out of style? It's hmm. always in the ideal window. What's that? It's the shirts that we have over at RVLR. Dot com. They got some amazing things. Eureka's repping one right now. Be sure to go over there and check it out. Eureka, what is the exact link so so our fans at home know? Yeah, we have it in the description of this uh, podcast right here, wherever you're listening to it. But it is shop.rblrsports.com. Uh, you can cl- click it right in the description where you're following it, and you can get right to all of our uh, really cool designs. And don't forget to use code BOLTS at checkout for 10% off your order. And if it's not just BOLTS gear, though. It's BOLTS gear, BUCKS gear, RAYS gear. I know there's a really popular shirt over there for the RAYS, the Devil RAYS shirt that we've got. So be sure to go check that stuff out um, and, and get your hands on some of that awesome merch. It helps support us, too. And you get a really cool T-shirt out of it. Uh, so uh, one last thing I want to talk about, though, Eureka, before we wrap up the show, yeah. um, and that's going to be Mikhail Sergachev. Mm. Sergachev recently signed a huge new eight-year extension. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people were worried because it was a it was a big extension, and he's going to be looking to take that next step and become the Ryan, Mc- maybe even Victor Hedman when when Hedman eventually steps down. Um, yeah. He's going to have to step up, and he's going to take a new role, but. This is just pure speculation and fun, um, but he's been making a lot of posts on Instagram, and obviously posts okay. on Instagram don't translate to anything. But I'll tell you what, Eureka, I've been kind of impressed. It looks like he is taking this um, new task very seriously, um, and he's excited for uh, the season coming up here, and I'm I'm excited to see what Sergachev, Sergachev can do this year. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, a couple of posts on Instagram, he's been posting himself working out um, and talking about how he is, uh, his caption for his Insta- his workout post was in the lab. Uh, so <laughs> I, I like it. I like it, Sergachev. It, it's cool stuff. So he's got a, he's got a mixtape like, coming out? Is that, is that yeah, what you're he's gonna, a- His rap career is getting ready to be lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's been posting a couple of workout videos, and he just seems like he's excited for this next step and ready to go and, and wants to be that Victor Hedman for the Lightning um, in, in the future. So I'm excited to see what Sergachev can do because he, he improved – Every year we've had him. Last year, we, we talked about this on this podcast before, too. Most people would probably say he kind of took a step back a little bit, maybe. Um, but it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this year plays out and if he can continue that growth uh, like he had before. Yeah. Well, uh, two things. One, uh, for those of you who build trade trees, like he's he's one of the fruits of the Jonathan Drew in trade, right? From, uh, to, <laughs> right. from the, yep. the Canadians. But it's, uh, 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 you know, we could go into all that. But, like, the thing that I love is that you, you always wonder about these young guys. Sergeyev, 24 years old. You always wonder if you're going to give this guy all this money, which uh, it actually doesn't kick in until next season. So he's still correct like four four point eight million this year. He goes into eight and a half. He gets the baller money next next year. Um uh, so, which maybe there's still a question mark, but you, you always wonder. You're giving these guys that you're earmarking, you're earmarking that person as, like, a superstar. Boom! You just gave him what's going to end up being eight and a half million. Would be almost ten. It'd be ten percent of the cap uh, of this year, right? So it's going to be you're right. giving him ten percent of your cap space. Uh, so you're earmarking him as the best. So you always want to see that guy take that leap that you you have put the faith you have given him the reward and and the confidence that they are a a, a valued member of the organization and so you want to see that in return and so boom uh not that i don't think anyone questioned his uh spirit or ability but but yeah man come on you you're gonna get the paycheck let's go get in the lab and 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 pull up these dudes because the we haven't really talked about it today, but like that defensive room is pretty young. Other than, other than Ian Cole and Victor mm-hmm. Hedman, they're all yeah. in their twenties. Um, they're all, you know, I mean, he's the best of the bunch, but he's only twenty four. But I mean, Chernak, Foot, uh, Myers, like all these guys are under twenty six years old. So um, their brains are just being fully formed as we speak, right? So. 
uh, yeah, I mean, uh, hell yeah, I want to see the fire. I want to see the go get because uh, I hope that Victor Hedman is really around for the three years left on his contract. But but this guy's the future. He's been earmarked as the as the leader, and uh, uh, I mean, I don't know what else I can say other than like. Uh, I hope he's. I hope his mixtape is fire, and I hope he really is getting it done in the lab, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's something I think you like to see as a fan, you know. Hell yeah! It, again, it doesn't mean anything, but when you see a guy that seems like he's into it and ready to go, and he knows that he's going to have an increased role, I think that's something that makes you feel good a, as a fan, and that's why I wanted to bring it up as well. Um, but Eureka, think about this too. Mikhail Sergachev will be paid more than Victor Hedman next year. That is sure. just a wild statement to me. That Victor, yeah. How good of a contract was that for Victor, for, for the Lightning to sign Victor Hedman? At, well, he getting paid, what, 7.7, 7, something like that? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Hedman's considered one of the best seven, defensemen in the NHL. 7, 8, 7, 9, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Sergeyev's going to get paid more than him. That is crazy to me. Um, and then the, the other big question, too, is we, again, with Hedman, you mentioned his three more years. Is he going to be around? You know, I wonder if a guy like him takes a pay cut to stick around for a couple more years too. Same thing for Stamkos. Maybe Stamkos wants to say, "Hey, I'll play a couple more years, uh, pay cut." Who knows? Buddy, Who knows what these? But guys if we do, can but. keep, if we can keep Hedman at like four million dollars in twenty twenty five, maybe we are cheating at that point. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't even know what the minimum is, but if St- if Steven Stamkos comes through with like. I mean, I don't know what, what Vin, Vinick maybe makes him a board member on like the Vinick charities or something like that, and just like Stamkos has like the veteran minimum of whatever, and then he's you know what I don't know. Hey, I'll pitch in a couple bucks to pay him under the table. What whatever we got to do, um, but yeah, that'd be wild. But yeah, I don't know. Money money is weird. Uh, you know, uh, the, who gets paid more, who gets paid less. Uh, you know what? It's just a sign of the economy of the times and. Uh, who knows what the cap will be in a year or two? Like uh, all that sweet, right. sweet. Because uh, uh, it's supposed to change a lot in these next couple of years. Yeah, I was gonna say that to sweet TV that. deal money keeps coming. Yeah. In. Well, and what's funny is we haven't even talked about. I mean, uh, Brent Seabrook is still technically on the books. I know they have him on LT, L, LTIR, but like uh, um, they made that move just to kind of like free up a roster spot and keep him like off the books but you know he he, he kind of goes away uh in a couple years so i think i think he's on the book for t- this year and next year i believe yeah. Not, yeah it's it's this year and next year and then he's yeah. he's gone as well which a lot yeah. of teams have actually moved away from that strategy of, sure. of acquiring guys to put them on ltir because this is the way uh things have changed a little bit but yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's the other thing too with everything we've talked about too, and like prospects, maybe sending guys to free agency. You know, that's another factor. Like, what's the cap going to do in a couple of years? Because like it's going up a million for the next couple of years, and then it's supposed to have a big jump. We don't know what the cap's going to be. We don't know what guys like Stamkos and Hedman are going to do. Are they going to retire yeah. completely? Are going to take pay cut? There's just again so many questions that we don't know the answer to. All we can do right now is watch Mikhail Sergachev get in the lab um, and start building his his mixtape and get excited. Uh, for what's upcoming this season, because we know we basically know what's going to happen this season. That's the only thing we can look forward to, mm. um, and, and hope the Lightning make another run, another Stanley Cup. Uh, I, I want to go the Warriors route, Eureka, where they they won the first two, lost the the third for uh, the Triple Crown, if you will, and then came right back and won it again. So uh, to solidify themselves as the dynasty. So the Lightning are still in the in the dynasty race. Let's. Let's make it happen. Let's 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 do it this year. So, um, Eureka, anything else uh, we need to mention before we wrap things up here? No, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has listened this far. You guys are always our MVP. If there's one thing we can do, we ask you about t-shirts for free, absolutely free, wherever you are listening to this, whether it's on uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, you name it. There's a like button, there's a follow button, there's a subscribe button. Hit that bad boy. Make sure that you are not missing out on all of the content. We have built an amazing team of people that talk about your Rays, your Rowdies, your Bucks who are just around the corner, and of course Jake and and Matt and everyone here that talk about the Lightning. We do this every week without fail, whether it's the offseason, whether it's the preseason, whether it's the playoffs, whether we're bringing home the trophy or we're talking about the disappointment, you get all of that content 
for free. And all you got to do is hit that like button or subscribe button wherever you're at. Uh, also on social, we are at RBLR Sports, whether that's Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. We are right there at RBLR Sports. We're climbing up. We're over uh, We're over a 1,000 people combined on all of our social media. So we thank you that have already done that. But if you're not already on the bandwagon, man, jump on, man. Hit that like button. It's just right do there. It. <laughs> Come on, man. It's it's so easy. It's it's the easiest thing, and it's free, and it helps us out immensely. So uh, with all that begging aside, uh, thank you. This has been phenomenal. I, I always love stepping in uh, every once in a while to, to talk with you, Jake, because uh, you're so informed, and uh, and I get to throw my wild conspiracy theories at you, and, and sometimes <laughs> you tell me I'm wrong, but but I think I think we had a we had a good discussion today. So yeah, absolutely, and we love having you on as well. It's always it's always fun. Um, but yeah, don't forget to go check out those other podcasts as well. I know I'm in the midst of my. Uh, Ray's watch time is at its peak right now because mm. uh, this is the best time for me to watch you because hockey I'm a diehard hockey fan that's my number one sport uh, but with no hockey obviously and ball is this is the time to watch baseball so make sure you go yeah. check out those guys on that race podcast right now because the postseason right around the corner the Rays are on a hot streak right now as well I'm actually going to be going to turn right. on the game right after we're done recording this yep um trying to catch those Yankees we're on a big giant losing streak right they're now they're gonna collapse uh, they're gonna collapse I'm enjoying yes I I hope so but uh, a lot of exciting things in Tampa coming up you know Rays in the middle of their season the Rowdies are in the middle right now too and, mm-hmm. and they'll be getting ready for the playoffs before you know it bucks around the corner and just just so many fun things to talk about so all right guys that's gonna do it for us in this episode thank you again to everybody who's listening and watching we really do appreciate it uh and we will see you guys next week go bolts thank you for tuning into this presentation by rblr sports on your way out of the stadium please remember to like and subscribe